Yo, what's going on guys? Ryan's here watching a video I'm so freaking excited for. 10 horrible ways to die in Jurassic World. Like, normally that'd be interesting, but it's by Goji Center. So, you know, it's gonna be one of the most bad shit and crazy videos. Bad shit and crazy? That's, that's not even a sentence. Either way, subscribe to Goji Center down below. Leave a like, subscribe here too, and let's get into it. Warning. Yes. This episode simulates fatalities and graphic scenarios that might be unsuitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm so excited for impaling and blood and guts and death and oh my god. Also advise you don't eat red pasta. <laughs> In this episode, we'll try to figure out one of the most ferocious man-made ecosystems of all time. A set of islands known <laughs> as the Five Deaths. I, I was jumping in these videos so dead serious, and then they slap you in the face with the pasta. <laughs> whose creatures constantly reminded humanity that life will find a way with destruction and death. Oh God! Today we will explore these methods of killing in gruesome detail. So sit this one out if you have a weak stomach, because today these guys will show no mercy. This is now beautiful. Sit back, hold on to your butts and get ready to witness the new ten ways to die in Jurassic World. Yes, I love this, this series right here. This, this is ten genius. Ways to die in Jurassic World series will be split into several parts. Today we will visit one of the islands known for not losing one but two parks. Isla Nublar, Woo! a lush tropical biome that has housed many creatures biologically engineered to be public attractions, and consequently ended up putting these parks out of business. But you know what else they can put an end to? You. Oh, Number snap. Number one, death with no escape. Jesus. Perhaps one of the most feared <laughs> creatures in this entire franchise were these guys, raptors. In Isla Nublar, we witnessed these raptors displaying frightening levels of strategic acumen, communication, and hunting ability. But what makes this specific animal more deadly is the fact that they hunt in packs, coordinating attacks to catch their prey off guard and swiftly. Now, let's talk. I feel like it's only appropriate that the first death in, in, in this series entirely is raptors. This is a beautiful way to start into it. It's like poetry. Talk about you. Oh, Finding God. yourself alone in the forests of Isla Nublar with these raptors roaming about would automatically change your definition to food. Keep in mind that these raptors will always know where you are. Sm I don't mean to be that. I feel like it completely depends on... It's, it's so weird because the raptors change so much throughout the movies. Call me crazy, but I feel like I'd be most horrified of those Jurassic Park 3 feathered raptors. Dude, those, those shits were terrifying. you from long distances. Once spotted, a member of the pack would quickly grab your attention by frightening you, but not before another member comes swiftly by attacking you from the flanks. Oh my the God. weapons found on these raptors are brutal. Razor sharp teeth on their skulls built for slicing off flesh with ease and claws that are meant to cut deep. <laughs> but another one known for doing the actual killing is this guy down here. These big curved claws are meant to disembowel. In this franchise, Woo! it's been observed that raptors sometimes attack humans by biting their heads. This violent method of attack can kill in an instant, as it is very likely that this movement will most likely break your neck and peel parts of your face off. That's gnarly! Alternatively, these claws could also spill the intestines of an unprotected belly. Oh, and according to Dr. Grant... You are alive. I start to meet you. God damn! <laughs> Next up. It's like, I now realize how, I, I could imagine how incredibly effective that is. Because even kangaroos, their toes aren't even remotely that scary. And a kangaroo will successfully grab onto you and start kicking at your stomach in an attempt to just gut you and disembowel you. So I couldn't imagine how effective that giant raptor claw is. Number two, skewered. What? So you think that carnivores do all the killing around here? What if we told you that if you mess with oh, yeah, big huh? herbivores, there's a big chance this fella could turn you into a hashtag? In this Lanublar, <laughs> shrimp specimens can grow to almost 30 feet in length and weigh up to around 10 tons. In this franchise, we see that these herbivores can pull up on you pretty fast. If you happen to be stupid enough to get close to one of these guys, this animal's massive build will be more than enough to trample you into the dust and process you into ground meat. Damn. Alternatively, if you're more unlucky, one of these horns could find their way right through you. If the trike lowers its head enough, the most likely place to get impaled would be your chest, since it offers the greatest surface area for the trike to be able to impale. The width of the base of this horn would be wide enough to make contact with your vital organs, such as lungs, heart, liver, and most likely damage your spinal cord. 
I need to just freeze frame it on that photo right there. That is crazy as hell. I love how we get a scientific breakdown of how this kills us, even though it's like, obviously, <laughs> obviously that's gonna just destroy your, I imagine you're gonna shit your pants and die almost instantly. Get paralyzed and then die in a couple of seconds. Yeah. This would have been the most pain you have ever felt. <sighs> if these horns are capable of factory resetting a T-Rex, then it's safe to bet these things will send your beauty behind to go meet your maker. I love that number beauty. three, blinded and gutted. One that. thing <laughs> is getting eaten, and another thing is getting eaten while not being able to do anything about it. Meet the Dilophosaurus. No, not this crap. This Dilophosaurus, <laughs> the Jurassic Park version. Oh, it's so pretty. for us, there's already a very popular scene that does a very good job at showing us what these things are capable of doing. In the original Jurassic Park film, we see Dennis Nedry have an unplanned encounter with one of the juvenile Dilophosaurus. Are we about to get into the book? The book, Nedry's death? Oh, oh God. <laughs> yes, this was a juvenile. I haven't even read it, but this scene. We're told. It's also believed that these guys can grow a little larger, but this one didn't need to be. After continuously disrespecting the Dilophosaurus, this little guy later managed to spray Nedry with a dose of tar-like poison. He didn't talk this a lot of shit. This right here is potent enough to do two things, blinding and later paralyzing you, allowing the Dilophosaurus to indulge in your flesh. This stuff is most likely made up of a mixture of corrosive agents and neurotoxins that eat through the layers of your eyeballs, oh! causing intense pain and blindness. God damn. These toxins will eventually be absorbed by your skin and make their way to the surrounding nerves, causing paralysis, leaving you handicapped, but not dead. I thought it was just some stinky shit that got in his eyes and it stinked like, I don't know, soda powder, a soda powder. I was thinking of like chip powder or soda that combined the words. The Dilophosaurus will then proceed to delete you from the census by ripping through your abdomen using its array of sharp weapons. Believe it or not, you can still live through this. Had you not been blinded, oh you would be able to witness the Dilophosaurus rope your guts out until you slowly fade away. Oh my god, like spaghetti. Number four, whipped and pricked. Jesus! Admittedly, a weapon such as this would do much more than just a prick. This weapon belongs to the mighty Stegosaurus. I imagine it's like instant death, right? Like with several dorsal plates along its back instantly. and four deadly spikes ready to impale just about anything. But in this episode, we're talking about you. Uh. So what would happen <laughs> if you ended up being on the wrong end of that tail? An animal of this size could swing this thagomizer at high speeds, and combined with the weight behind the blow, those kids all should have died. More than just send you flying. Let us explain. It is said that these spikes can measure roughly around two to three feet, long Damn. enough to completely impale a human being. But that's not all. Remember that you are also getting whipped by this tail at the same time. A pierce of this tail, combined with the centrifugal energy forced against your pierced torso would mean that this impact would not only pierce, but rip your torso simultaneously. Oh, shit! Our bodies aren't <laughs> built to withstand such impacts. Oh, my God. Meaning that after getting yeeted into oblivion, your buddies will only recuperate parts of your ripped, mutilated body. But there's another type At of tail in this island built to do this, but worse. Number five, Mace of Doom. By now, it should be evident that herbivores on this island have many ways to put you in a coffin. If you thought this type of tail would hurt, wait till you hear about this one. The Ankylosaurus is one of the most, if not the most heavily armored dinosaur on the island. It dumps Pulling up to one of these creatures up. personal space is like asking him to turn you into that red pasta that I know you <laughs> refuse to get rid of. Let's find out how. While the exact impact force of these bulky Jurassic World Ankylosaurus is yet unknown, we do know that the real-world Ankylosaurus Oof. tail could swing with a force of 4,800 newtons per second. Is that a lot? To put this into perspective, getting hit in the head with a bat by a pro baseball player is a pathetic 13 newtons. Holy Jesus! Furthermore, these Jurassic World Ankylosaurus flex the ability to execute a whole 360 while swinging this tail. If and when you catch this club to your upper torso, you can expect every single bone in your upper body to get shattered while spitting out anything close to your eye sockets, mouth, and ears. The extreme inner pressures caused by this club would almost liquefy your insides and most likely empty your bowels, oh, leaving a oh bloody God. and crappy mess on the floor that- They liquefy my insides, fine, but don't make me shit my pants. Nobody will want to clean up. No. Oh. Number six, <laughs> meat eating bull. Let's oh, switch gears and go back to the dinosaurs that will eat you after putting you out of commission. 
In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, we were introduced to a ballsy medium-sized theropod that seemed too eager to bag these people. Ballsy! Carnotaurus. Now, obviously, we are going to discuss the process of getting chewed and swallowed, but it is believed that this particular carnivore uses different methods to hunt its prey. As its name suggests, this creature has two horns on the top of its skull. Some scientists believe that Carnotaurus actually used these for combat against other members of the same species, and possibly as a tool to knock down its prey. In this case, oh, you. Damn. This would most likely happen after an unpleasant encounter with the Carno and while you're running away. Getting hit on your back by the Carno's horned head would cause enough trauma on your spinal cord to possibly paralyze you, Woo! but most certainly knock the air out of your lungs. Oh, yeah. A smaller or leaner individual would most likely die from the shock alone. So now that you're- Me personally, I'm extremely muscular and large and very manly. I probably doubt that I'd be affected in any way, shape, or form, but most of you would get liquefied. Motionless and without air, the Carno would proceed to clamp its jaws around any limbs or torso, Ugh. shaking you until these rip off. Damn. Realistically, there are many ways the Carno could kill, but we figured this method was the most prolonged and painful. <laughs> so far, we've talked about ways to die on the ground, but let's take this to the next level. Number seven, flying This lessons. is getting intense. No park full of dinosaurs is complete without a birdcage. And in this particular enclosure, we find these things, pteranodons. These homicidal flying reptiles are the reason you should start learning to look up instead of just looking next to you. If you happen to catch yourself in the middle of a flock bird party, make sure to stay down. Because once these guys pick you up, just know the next time you hit the floor, you probably won't be alive to see it. Bullshit! As you can How do I avoid here, that? The human build happens to be perfectly shaped to get picked up by these creatures. We so are, dude. speaking, we kind of fit together like a puzzle. Oh. These giant birds have wingspans that can measure over 20 feet and can flap their wings with enough force to pick up large prey such as you. Getting picked up is not the worst part, since it's portrayed in two films that these creatures usually contest for their prey while airborne, meaning that your soft, squishy, defenseless body could be fair game to get impaled by these long beaks. Well, that's these squishy. Come with very sharp tips that are capable of piercing deep into an unarmored victim. Damn. But let's say you're lucky enough to not have this happen to you, and you somehow let yourself free. I say damn way too much in these videos and I'm aware of it. It's just like you, you're sitting here and then you see someone just getting pale or some, some, something, you know, it's like back to unlucky. Number eight. What, how else Will do you react? <laughs> if you watch the Netflix show Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, chances are that you are acquainted with this dudette, the Scorpius Rex. This animal did not appear in the films, but it did here. Its name is inspired by one of its genetic contributors known as the scorpion fish. These fish's spikes, if pressed on, can release toxic venom Don't that could potentially it. kill if left untreated. Why is he touching this it? attribute was migrated what the, what the hell? into the Scorpius Rex we know today. These quills were the culprit behind the death of some dinosaurs in this park, and additionally the reason why these dinosaurs started acting more aggressively. But what if you get hit with one of these? In one of the episodes, this girl was actually hit with a few quills. Fortunately for her, she didn't die. Although she technically should have since this wound was near the spleen. Yeah, that's just plot however, armor, bro. Getting hit in any of these vital organs, especially on the chest, could cause internal bleeding, and if it was on the heart, immediate death. Well, yeah. Not to mention the effects the toxins would have on your body. Other immediate shutdowns would be caused if you got hit in the eye sockets near the jugular or nape. Realistic. Pretty much just stabbed at any vital part then, for the most part. This animal is more than equipped with other weapons to catch bodies in Isla Nublar, but we will leave the biting to the one who does it best. Number nine. Oh, the T-Rex. to death. Woo! If you've seen one of our other 10 ways to die in Skull Island episodes, you will recall that there were animals with jaws capable of biting right through a human torso. But this island has a creature that will put them to shame. Oh, shit. You know who it is. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, or this one more commonly known as Rexy, is the T-Rex that roamed this island for quite some time now. This is and beautiful. And fed on a couple peeps before. But how does it feel to be eaten in such a manner? To study what these people felt, we first used this guy as an example. Uh. As we can see, the <laughs> manner in which the T-Rex clamped her massive jaws around this guy left this dude's legs hanging out. We know that a T-Rex has a tremendous bite force, but realistically, the T-Rex wouldn't have the need to exert all this bite force on a small human, or else he'd be cut in half. Rexy, in this case, would want to eat the whole carcass. 
Look, you wouldn't bite a hot dog as hard as you can, right? Yeah, because you don't have I mean, to. yeah, that's a good a comparison right there. would have sufficed. What this dude felt, however, was anything but subtle. T-Rex have 6 to 12 Shit, inch teeth with small serrations to aid in cutting. These would immediately pierce through a human torso, but you wouldn't be dead just yet. In order to die completely, these teeth would have to pierce the head or the heart. Right now, this guy is in immense pain. I mean, come on, you can still see him swinging his arms everywhere. I guess, yeah, it makes sense because the teeth are only logically around his gut and stuff like that. There's nothing that lethal. There's no arteries or anything right there. He'd have to, he'd be alive for at least like a minute. What kills someone in this position is the imminent blood loss. Yeah, which will come around in that's a few horrible. Seconds. The violent shaking would first proceed to tear ligaments, stretch muscles, and break even more of your backbones. So we can guess this dude died just before finally getting swallowed. Bet this was the first time someone walked you through a T-Rex bite. <laughs> this is beautiful. Number 10, <laughs> hunted for sport. In these previous methods oh, that were discussed, dog. you were put in a coffin because one, you were stupid and got too close, or two, the dinosaurs were just hungry. We're about to discuss an animal that will put your life insurance to work just because it wanted to. For fun, that is. The Indominus Rex is arguably the most powerful dinosaur on this island, created to be bigger, faster, and stronger than the T-Rex. This Although is it a dinosaur? About how this animal could snap you in two would just be a waste of time. So instead, we want to talk about how this thing could literally manhandle you until you die. I don't want to get manhandled, bro. We'll be focusing on a very strange and significant attribute found on this creature. That's like the worst way to phrase it, dude. The worst way to die. Manhandled. That's like, I'd rather die before prison than go to prison and get manhandled. An opposable thumb which is defined as a digit, which is capable of being moved freely and independently. Yo, I never really put it together that it has an opposable thumb. Like, it, I didn't see it grab people. It did make sense. You could visibly see it, but I never thought about it until now. This is what allows us and primates to grip onto things and manipulate them. Oh, shit. Now, we have seen that the Indominus can actually pick people up similar to how you would pick up a water bottle. These hands are huge and strong. The constricting effects of getting picked up by the Indominus would not only scare the feces out of you, but will make it more difficult to breathe. Not the, the Indominus feces! The would proceed to raise you up to its mouth, where it would bite the upper part of your torso right off, and then drop you. Why? Because this guy kills for fun. What else can these do? Getting this guy to throw hands at you will only result in you getting impaled by these long and very resistant claws. Given how smart and cruel this animal turned out to be, we could get very creative with the ways this dinosaur could end you. As far as I can tell, the only way to survive the Indom is grab onto its ankle and hold on till it gets tired. And no, because it could just scratch you off its feet. You're dead. But we will stop here before YouTube Guidelines decides to stop this channel from existing. That's smart. My other channel got two copyright strikes, and that's why I now have a whole new reaction channel. To prevent this, please leave a like and subscribe so we can continue to bring this disturbing content to your feed. That's beautiful right there. Everyone better subscribe to Goji Center after this because now they're starting a new series based on Jurassic deaths. Like this one obviously is going to cover all the main ones, you know, Trike, Stego, T-Rex, Indom, Hybrids, like the Raptors, the most basic starter ones because it's like, it's the episode one. It's the episode two, three, and four that's going to like grab you by the balls like, oh shit, I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm freaking excited. So yeah, subscribe to Goji Center, leave a like, subscribe down below too, and I'll see you next time. Peace.